Take a look at this map of Cape Town, South Africa. The different colored dots gives the race of the person living at that location. You can see that due to a history of racial segregation, the city is still very divided. Now, everyone would agree that using somebody's race in a machine learning model is unethical. But in the case of South Africa, you could achieve similar results by using someone's zip code or neighborhood. We say that location is a proxy for race. This is one of the ways in which machine learning can produce unfair predictions. We're going to discuss proxy variables along with four other reasons. Historical bias, unbalanced data sets, algorithm choices, and user feedback loops. If you want a deeper look at these reasons, make sure to check out the article linked in the description. The article also explains how unfairness is related to more general forms of bias, including measurement bias, representation bias, and aggregation bias. On that, it's worth clarifying what we mean by bias before we continue. It's a confusing term used to refer to a range of issues. In ML, bias is any systematic error made during model development, such as incorrect assumptions or mistakes in code. They can be introduced during data collection, feature engineering, training, or even by the way you deploy your model. In day-to-day -day life, bias has a different definition. It is prejudiced for or against a person or a group based on their characteristics. Similarly, fairness is the absence of any prejudice towards an individual or group. In algorithm fairness, bias can have yet another definition. And it's really a combination of the previous two. That is, bias is any error that has led a model to become prejudiced towards one person or a group. We can also call this type of bias unfairness. Based on this definition, it may seem like all models are unfair. Is it not the point of machine learning to differentiate between groups based on their characteristics? So it's important to define what we mean by characteristics. When analyzing fairness, we mean sensitive characteristics like race, gender, ethnicity, country of origin, and religion. In a data set, these are called protected variables. And there are five key reasons why a model can become unfair towards a group represented in a protected variable. It is not debatable that certain groups have been discriminated against in the past. This is reflected in our data. And when we train a model, on this data, the model can reflect and perpetuate this historical discrimination. A recent example comes from a model used to help automate recruitment. Now, I don't want to name names. It was Amazon. Resumes from historical applications were used to train their models. The target variable was based on the decision to accept or reject a job application linked to these resumes. The problem is that due to recruiter's bias, most of the successful applicants, well, they look like me. Women were rejected because of their gender and not because of their qualifications. This bias is ultimately reflected in the target variable. The model learned to associate characteristics of resumes from women with unsuccessful candidates. It went as far as penalizing the word woman, such as captain of the women's soccer team. But I should say that they did end up scrapping this model. We've mentioned the second reason already. Proxy variables are model features that are highly correlated or associated with protected variables. A model that uses proxy variables could effectively be using protected variables to make decisions. In understanding proxy variables, the difference between association and causation is important. Suppose we build a model to predict if someone will default on a loan. A rational person would agree that someone's race does not increase their risk of default. And it's not even their location that will change their risk. It is their economic position. Yet models only care about associations. And unfortunately in South Africa, race, location and economic position are all associated. To explain this third reason, Suppose we want to calculate the mean age of marriage in the population. 
we get a value of 33, but this value is not representative of all subgroups in the population. The mean age of the religious group is 28. In comparison, the mean age of the non-religious group is closer to the overall mean. Due to the size of this group, the overall mean has been skewed towards its mean. Model parameters can become skewed in a similar way. Models try to capture trends across the entire population. Yet, within different subgroups, model features can have different trends. If one group makes up the majority of a population, the model can favor trends within that group, resulting in poorer performance for minority groups. ImageNet is an example of a skewed dataset. It is a large set of images used to train image recognition models. Concepts like taxis, weddings, and restaurants are represented in the dataset. The appearance of these can vary greatly across countries. The problem is that the majority of the images come from North America and Europe, resulting in poorer performing computer vision models for other places. The previous three sources of bias have all involved data. Our choices around the algorithms that we use can also contribute to fairness issues. For one, some models are less interpretable than others. This can make it harder to identify and correct the source of bias. Another factor is the objective of the model. Take social media recommendation algorithms. They have one job, to keep you on the platform. Unfortunately, anger is effective at driving engagement. But is it ethical to recommend people hateful or violent content to keep them engaged and drive up ad revenue? In general, Models are trained using a cost function. Typically, these are designed to maximize some measure of accuracy. Unless we adjust the cost function to consider fairness, we cannot guarantee fair decisions. There is another issue with cost functions. They aim to maximize accuracy across the entire development population. So you can see how algorithm choice can act in combination with our previous unbalanced sample issue. In order to maximize overall accuracy, a model can simply ignore trends in smaller subgroups. The other data issues are also related to algorithm choice. We can choose to maximize accuracy on a biased target variable. An algorithm could also use proxy variables to maximize accuracy. The last source of bias has to do with how we interact with models. Once trained, a model will be deployed. As users interact with the model, we will collect more data to train future versions. If we deploy a biased model, this can lead to more biased data, which can lead to further bias in future models. I have worked as a data scientist in the banking industry. Yeah, I built models used to automate lending. They were used to sanction hundreds of thousands of loans and had a material impact on the economy. Now, imagine if these models were biased towards a certain group. The people in this group would be less likely to receive loans. As a result, they and their businesses would be less successful. In other words, their future financial position would be worse because of the model. Now, if we retrain the model on this data, it would be even less likely to give them loans. So you can see how this can create a negative feedback loop. Another example on a larger scale is ChatGPT. This model is trained on text from the internet, but now a large amount of that text is being generated by the model itself. If bias is reflected in that text, it may reinforce bias in future versions of the model. So hopefully you agree that before deploying a model, we need to measure bias, identify its source and correct it. We focus on where bias comes from. Make sure you subscribe so you can catch a future video about measuring it and another about correcting it. As mentioned, related to the concept of fairness is interpretability. And if you want to understand how your models are making predictions, then look no further than the Python chat package. 
My course will teach you both the theory and application of SHAP. And for a limited time, you can get free access if you sign up to the newsletter in the description.